In Russia, the first serial production of thermoplastic composites, a super material for rocket, aircraft, and drone components, has been launched in the country. Full cycle composite technologies are available to only a few countries in the world. And we managed to overcome a huge gap and then become leaders. How did we achieve this and why is it necessary? And we'll also tell you about the new hero of the week after a brief summary of positive news. In Cabardino, Bulgaria, the Cherek Hydroelectric Power Station has been launched. In St. Petersburg, a special steel production facility is open. In Ufa, a foundry for engine manufacturing. In Magnitogorsk, the first phase of a new steel wire workshop has been launched. And in the Saratov region, a zinc oxide plant. In the Nizhny Novgorod region, a metalworking facility in the Stavropol region, a potash fertilizer production plant in Kemerovo, a mineral fertilizer production plant, and in the Stavropol region, a cheese production facility. All members of the Russian team won gold medals at the 57th International Chemistry Olympiad in Dubai. Some time ago, Russian scientists raised the remains of an ancient warship that sank in the Kerch Strait in the century before Christ. Analysis showed that to seal the seams of the hull, ancient shipbuilders used tarred woolen ropes and a coating made of clay mixed with animal hair and feathers. This is nothing other than one example of the use of composites. Other bows used by Mongolian warriors were made of a bamboo core, sinew, horn plates, and silk threads, all bound together with pine resin. Such a combination provided record-breaking shooting range and durability. To sum up, composites are combined heterogeneous materials that consist of a matrix and a filler. The matrix is what binds the composition together. For example, clay, resin, or concrete. The filler is what gives its strength, such as straw, fibers, or stones. Over several thousand years, technology has advanced a lot, but the principle has remained the same. Composites consist of a matrix and a filler. However, instead of natural materials, polymers are mainly used today. There are a huge number of types and combinations of them for different tasks, but in general, composites are used where a lightweight, yet strong and heat-resistant material is needed. From ship hulls to rocket and aviation components? In our country, this field developed especially rapidly in the 1960s during the space race and the Cold War. Composites helped reduce the weight of ballistic missile warheads and spacecraft. For example, unique composite materials were used for the first time in the Buran. Special tiles made of ultra-thin quartz fiber and other elements protected against heating of a thousand degrees Celsius or more during atmospheric entry. But despite all the undeniable successes of Soviet science, we were forced to buy raw materials for carbon fiber from Japan. Our own chemical industry was focused on mass-produced polymers, not on specialized materials. And domestic fiber was twice as weak as the Japanese one. After the collapse of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, a significant part of the composite industry remained in Ukraine and other republics. And it quietly died there. That's why Russia only recently started catching up with foreign competitors. And this is one of those cases when you can say, better late than never. At the beginning of the year, we reported a landmark news story. For the first time in the country's history, our scientists managed to produce carbon fiber with a strength of 7 gigapascals. Previously, only three companies in the world, two Japanese and one American, had such technologies. This is an undeniable achievement based on the work of entire generations of Soviet and Russian chemists, as well as the extensive work to restore the industry, which began in our country long before the first sanctions. As a result, today we have become one of the few countries on the planet to assemble 
a complete technological chain, from crude oil extraction to its processing into carbon fiber and final products made from it. But recently, another important piece of news arrived. Rosatom launched the country's first serial production of thermoplastic composites. They also consist of two main components, reinforcing carbon fibers and a polymer matrix. But the key feature is that thermoplastics can be remelted and recycled, which speeds up their production and simplifies repairs. For example, damaged composite elements of an airplane or drone can be repaired right in the field. Such materials, even compared to other types of composites, have good impact, toughness, durability, and, importantly, are produced relatively quickly using thermoforming and automated layup methods. And this is in demand right here. Thermoplastic composites are rapidly entering the aviation industry in the civil sector and are being used for the production of brackets, clamps, and fastening parts. Using them in door structures and interior elements reduces the weight by up to 20% compared to aluminum counterparts. In Russia, the serial technology has only just appeared, and the materials will be used in the production of PD-8, PD-14, and PD-35 aircraft engines. When manufacturing elements of the external contour, including the casing and blades, the fan, the splitter casing, the skin, and the gas generator. The work is underway at United Engine Corporation Saturn and United Engine Corporation Aviad Vigatel Enterprises. And the Ulyanovsk Enterprise Aerocomposite is planning to create an aircraft made entirely of thermoplastic composites. This will allow the weight of the aircraft to be reduced by 15 to 20%. Recently, we showed you a report from the Enoprom 2025 exhibition and the new lightweight aircraft Tango, made from Rosatom composite materials. As for Wineprom, it is known that Americans manufacture blades and fuselage elements from thermoplastics. Sikorsky Cargo Helicopter 53 helicopters V-22 Osprey Tiltrotors and X-61 Gremlin UAVs. Gradually, these materials are replacing traditional metals and alloys, making the equipment lighter and stronger. That's why it's so important that Russia has managed to catch up and is actively continuing to develop advanced composite manufacturing technologies. In 2025, the volume of composites produced by Rosatom for the aviation industry will almost double to 385 tons and this is just the very beginning. We'll keep you updated in the next episodes. Time of Russia.